This right here is a DJI Osmos Pocket 3 and one of my favorite cameras of 2024. And I've been lately using this to get a lot of POV for kind of like that behind the scenes or more so for like B-roll that can cut in and out without really having to think about running a second video camera. Now, the setup that I have been using is this right here, but because I want more of a minimalist setup and I'm always looking to improve it, I came across this right here. Hey, what's going on? Hope you're doing all right. My name is Matt, this is Dwyer Creatives. Today we're going over my POV setup for this camera right here, the DJI Osmos Pocket 3. Now I have done a video on my POV setup and that's gonna be the old one because I am kind of switching to a new one, or am I? Now, if you'd like to see that video, it's gonna be right here. I think this is gonna be the easiest way to show it. So I'm just gonna have this as a flat lay. So the camera we're talking about again is this camera right here, the DJI Osmos Pocket 3. We're using this camera to capture POV. So let me just go ahead and take it out of there. Now, when I'm walking around carrying this, I'll throw ahead in either this or this and have that in my pocket. Also, it's very nice to have this little silicone base. If you need to just prop it on something just for a minute while you're getting set up. These right here are gonna be the two different setups. So this over here is my original setup. Now, I also wanna say that all of this is gonna be evolved around obviously the pocket 3 but also the peak design capture clip and here is the base plate right here now this will go ahead and attach to the shoulder strap of my backpack moving from the capture clip on my old design you would have this little piece that it would connect the quarter 20 here into the quarter 20 here this is a small rig arm which would then go into this tilta cage or the tilta mounting accessory expander I'm just going to call it a tilt cage. This was my old setup. So it would look kind of like that. That would be how it would be set up. And when I had it on me, it would be set up like this. So shoulder here, go set up here. And this is the way it would sit. That way I could make adjustments with the arm to aim it exactly where I want to and keep it relatively centered on my body. Now, a few little things with that. To attach the pocket three, you have a quarter 20 in the bottom, you have a quarter 20 in the bottom here. So you will need some kind of screwdriver to be able to screw that in. And then for me tightening these down into here, you have the tool that comes with the arm. Or if you really need to, I usually have a pair of these Cobra pliers on me. Go ahead, tighten everything down to the base plate here. And of course, you have the Allen key for that. So you might need those two additional tools for that. I'm gonna cut in here real quick. I do wanna say that if you're looking for any of these, I do have affiliate links down in the description. There is no added cost for you, but they do help support the channel. So if you do use them, thank you very much. Now, my new setup is gonna be this right here, and I have used it and I'm liking it so far, which is gonna be this Yuan Z cage, or this is called the PK06 or PK06 is the model number. And then that will attach to this little base here. And this is the CA22 for the model number. Now on the bottom, you have the quarter 20 or a cold tree mount, and this would connect to the capture clip. From here, this would simply attach to the front here. And my criteria for both of these are when this is in here, you're able to go ahead and see the screen yourself so that you can make those adjustments opposed to the other mounts which have it facing outward. It also gives it a little bit more protection if someone runs into you or you fall or anything like that. Now with this setup, they do have a cold shoe mount here on the side. If you wanted to, you could clip it to the side here or even on the back. This too, you do have a action cam or a lot of people use this with like GoPros. So you can use GoPro attachments with this too. I don't particularly use that for this because that's not what I'm looking for. To open this up, you simply press this down and it opens up. It has a slightly rubber texture here and along here and in these upper corners to help protect it. Now, I will note and say that when you are trying to get the camera out of here, you might need to press these together to allow the lever to actually release it but that just means when you do have it in here, it's really not gonna come out unless you want it to. The other thing worth noting is that 
when I put this on, I had this attached to myself and took this out of my pocket and threw it on here. Doing that, I didn't have this perfectly aligned. And if you do not get this perfectly aligned, just clips on like that and you're in. But if you do not have this perfectly aligned, there's two things. When you go to move this, well, you can't. And that's a benefit that the tilt the cage has over this. The major problem that I noticed that with this alignment here is that if you don't have this perfectly aligned with the joystick, when you're trying to make those fine tune adjustments, it really won't do that. So I had to take it out, make the adjustments and then put it back in. And then I realized that if you kind of center this perfectly, you can make those adjustments with it, which is what, again, I liked about this. Now, when it comes into terms of weight between the two, you would think that this would weigh a lot more. And without a scale, I think they weigh about the same. And this is what I mean. You want to go ahead and press it together to get it to release it. I think they weigh about the same amount going between the two of them. This, all you need is your Allen key for the Peak Design plate to go into the bottom to make sure it's nice and tight on there. Once you have the camera on, if you wanted to make little adjustments here, you do need the Allen key that comes with it to tighten it and loosen it. I have it set so that it's not gonna move unless you really force it. So for my purposes, I'll throw this in my pocket, but I'm not gonna be using this key. I'm gonna show you two clips. One is gonna be with the tilt cage. The other is gonna be with the Yolanzi setup. And I want you to tell me which one's which. So which is which? Which is the tilt cage and which is the Yulanzi A or B? If you guessed that the Yulanzi was A, you'd be wrong. The tilt cage was A and the Yulanzi was B. So in comparison of it, it is a little bit more off-center when you're using the Yulanzi, but overall I get about the same amount of results. And this just needs a lot less pieces than this and less tools to grow with that. Now saying that, both of them will kind of have that step you get with when someone walks they kind of bounce so you'll see that slight bouncing but you can adjust it in post i will say that i do really like this setup because it is so minimalistic i can go ahead and just throw it on here as i said you can't turn the screen when it is on here but for the most part i'm not worried about it something i do a lot in the tilt cage is i'll go ahead and just stick this in my pocket with this cover now this cover as you can see will work with this setup pop it off. It is a little bit tight down here, so just note that. I think the other benefit of this is you don't need this little base here. Of course, you can add it on or throw the battery in it to extend the battery life of it, but it's not necessary to have this operating, opposed to the tilt -a cage which you need the quarter 20 to connect it to here to make sure that it stays in there. In terms of overall protection though, you do get a little bit more protection from the tilted cage. For my purposes and what I've been using this when I'm trying to do POV, I think this is gonna be my go-to setup. I am still gonna keep this and use this. I like using this when I use my suction cup just because it's easier to connect it to it. I can connect it on either side or on the bottom. So when I'm trying to mount it in different positions, I definitely think the tilted cage has the advantage over that. 
But for this setup, when I'm trying to just keep it minimalist, I do think that this is gonna be a better setup. Now, in terms of cost-wise, this is definitely gonna be the cheaper setup compared to this, but then this does give you a lot more versatility as it has more mounting points and you can use it for a lot more different things, which of course you could kind of do that for here, mount it on the side or the back. But I think when it comes to maybe mounting this to my vehicle, I think I'm definitely gonna mount it in here so it has that added protection. Overall, this is going to be the setup that I use from now on until I can find something better. I am still going to use this, as I said, for vehicle mounted shots or just other things where I need different angles. But for my POV, this is going to be it. Now, if you have any questions or thoughts on this, leave that in the comment section. And I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this up here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.